Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm going to continue what we started last week. And that is kingdom blessing. Amen. And I said it's going to be a long conversation. Praise God. It's going to be a long conversation. How many of us want to be blessed? I want to be blessed. How many of us want to be blessed the kingdom way? You see, there is the... Let, the context of our conversation, I started out with this, I titled it The Blessing. But later on, the Lord prompted me to change it, to, put it to, to title it Kingdom Blessing, because we must distinguish. Amen. We must distinguish. The Bible says the tender mercies of the wicked are what? cruel it doesn't mean that the wicked doesn't have mercy the devil can have mercy on you but you know that that mercy comes with cruelty there is no other place you can be blessed without sorrow than that of the kingdom so there are two types of blessing that operates on earth. I know people who are stinkingly rich. They are not happy. They trade everything they've got just for happiness. One of them lives very close to me. They are not happy. So what I'm trying to share with us is how to be blessed from a kingdom perspective. Like I said, it's not a one-day conversation. It's not a two-day conversation. It is a long conversation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it okay to come down, sir? Please, I'm going to have to. Because, you see, when it's serious, I want to get close. Amen. I want to get close. Proverbs chapter 10, we started last week and we said verse 22. That's our base scripture and that's going to be the scripture we're going to run with. We may run this until uh, July. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see how God will help us. Don't worry. Instead of for it not to be bored for you, I will change topics. I'll just change the topic. You will not know that it's still the same thing I'm running on. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And adds no sorrow to it. He adds no sorrow. And last week, we started out to try to consider, first and foremost, what does it look like to be blessed? Amen. We did say, if blessing is all about what you have, there is a depreciation value. You're an accountant, sir. You know, after you depreciate an asset, it gets to a point, what do you do? You write it off. It then becomes no longer a blessing. <laughs> so, what you have that is not sustainable 
is no longer a blessing. The Bible says the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things that he or she possesses. It therefore means, man, that the blessing that he's talking about is completely different from the countables. Let me show you how we think. Genesis chapter 15. I'll show you how we think. Genesis chapter 15. Let's turn to verse 1. It's not on my notes, but I'm just going to digress a bit. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 1. Hallelujah. Okay. I can quote it. Are you there? The Bible says, The Lord said to Abraham, I am your shield. Okay, good. Now, listen to this. Look at it. Genesis chapter 15. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to who? Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. How good is that? That's beautiful. Don't worry, when I start teaching on that concept of tithing, you will get to see what this means. But that's not the point today. But what does the next verse say? The next verse says what? And Abraham said, God says, I am your reward. My brother, let me borrow you. You're looking back. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, now. You are God, Okay. Okay, let's assume you're God. I am Abraham. Now, God has said to me, I am your reward. So you say to me, I'm your reward. Which means, this is my reward. It's my package. I can take it with me. And do whatever I want with it. But this is what I said to him. What are you going to give me? Are you getting the picture? What are you going to give me seeing I go childless? Some of us will say, what are you going to give me seeing I don't have money? What are you going to give me? Seeing I don't have a job. What are you going to give me? Seeing there is family issues. What are you going to... So, we now reduce what God is saying to us to common countables. This is not about reward. I am your exceedingly great reward. So what? What am I going to do with this one? Well, no, I'm only interested in what is here and what is here. Do you understand? So, the moment God showed up and said, I am your reward, the next thing Abraham was looking was the pockets of God to see what he has to give him. But God says, I have given you everything about me. Everything. But what we look for is how he's going to, you know, dip his hand out and give us. Are you getting the point? God bless you, sir. So, we zero our Definition of blessing to what? To countables. And when God is talking about blessing, yes, 
countables might be an outward expression of the blessing. But there is something that triggers that. And that's what we want to discover. That's what we want to address. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. Now, Last week, we touched on, we started having a conversation around the portrait of a blessed man. We're having a conversation around the portrait of a blessed man. And we went to Psalm 24. Um, my spirit had not moved away from Psalm 24, so I want us to deal with Psalm 24. Let's go to Psalm 24 from verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and, the full, and its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. And last week I said to you, if the earth is the Lord's and you're a son of God, who owns the earth? Huh? The Bible says he has given it to who? The people of the earth. So if you own the earth, what are you looking for? And I'm saying it in literal terms because God will speak to you in literal terms. The thing is this, we think there's some religious stuff. We just believe that there's some things that, uh, you know, uh, we have to be careful here. Let's talk reality. This is the reality. I promise you that this is the reality. When you begin to believe that, what happens is this. There is a very strong pool of resources that comes towards you. Why? You believe what he says, he will do exactly as he said. How many of us really believed that God part the Red Sea? It's just a storybook. Now, if you can believe that God part the Red Sea, ah, ah, is that same God? Why can't He? Are you getting the point? I want us to see the magnitude of God so that we can step into the place where God wants us to step into. Verse 2, sir. It says, for he has founded upon the sea, verse 3. Let's go to verse 3. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, or who, shall, who, or who may stand in his holy place? This is where God begins to. This is, this is the expression. This is the practicality of how we take the earth. Okay? The first place is to be able to stand on the hill of the Lord. And who may stand in his holy place. Like I said to you last week. God will always want us to come up. To the hill. The Bible says. And it shall come to pass. The mountain of the Lord shall be highly exalted. Above every other mountain. Amen. And we will come there. He says, come up and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know of. So God wants us to bring us up. But many times, we allow the devil to take us up. I shared with you last week and I demonstrated on how, I'm trying to recap for those of us who were not here last week, that's what I'm trying to do. We, we, you see that there is a difference between going up and, there's a, and 
being taken up. The only person that took someone up eh, was the devil. The Bible says, and he took Jesus where? Up to the mountain. And showed him the entire earth, the world, the kingdoms of this world. And all he needed to do was what? Bow. <laughs> but when Jesus knew, you see, the difference is we, we don't know. Jesus knew already. He said, the earth is mine. You're asking me to bow to get what is already mine. Are you getting it? That's the same thing in the beginning. It says, for the day you eat of this, you will surely die. And the devil says, you shall not die. The reason is this. God does not want you to be like him. Is it true that God doesn't want you to be like him? No. He was made in the image and in the likeness of who? You're already God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And because you are God... How can the devil now trick you into believing elsewhere? So we compromise to allow the enemy to quickly, you know, the devil took Jesus up in a flash. But when God says, come up, there's a bit of responsibility there on us. The blessing of the enemy is without responsibility. That's why it will take you up. But the fall is always big. The fall is always great. Are you getting me? Let's continue. This is where I'm going to camp a bit today. Who shall stand in his holy place? Because when you get to that point, you get to the holy place. Who shall stand there? Verse 4. Watch this. He who has what? A clean hands and a pure heart. Please. Let's take the word blessing. Eh? Just hang it on the shelf first. I know that that is the word that is most prevalent in the body of Christ. That's fine. God has no issue with blessing us. In fact, when he created man, the Bible says, and he did what? And he blessed them and said to them, so that's not a problem with God. The issue for us is actually accessing it. And this is where I want us to clean up the cobwebs first. Let's clean these cobwebs. Because many of us will struggle with all these things simply because of this. Clean hands and a pure heart. And one who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Friends, if we can treat this, if we can treat this symptom, It is impossible for you not to be blessed. I know that they will tell you, confess this scripture 1,000 times. It's not where it is. They might tell you, oh, pray 500 minutes. That's good as well, but that's not where it is. They will tell you, sow a seed. <laughs> you already understand what a seed is now, isn't it? What is the seed? The word of God. 
Your obedience to the word of God is your seed. They will say, come and sow and you will receive. It's fine. But that is not where it is. I promise you, my people. I know that we may not be the loudest preachers. We may not be the most, you know, known or popular or celebrity preachers out there. But I'm telling you the truth of God's word. This is the thing that bites us and holds us down from being blessed. He who has what? A clean hand and a pure. What is a clean hand? What is a clean hand? Because we need to treat it. What is a clean hand? Let the scripture interpret scripture. Psalm 26 verse 6. Psalm 26 verse 6. What does he say? Psalm 26 verse 6 says, I will wash my hands. How? In innocence. I will go about your altar, O Lord. Why? I can go to your holy place now because my hands are washed in innocence. Listen, that is one of the key things we must deal with. That is one of the key things we must deal with if we are going to. We must be innocent before the Lord. Our hands must be clean. Our hands must be clean. Abraham in Genesis chapter 14 will say to uh, 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 um, the king of Sodom, he said, I have lifted up my hands to the Lord. Nobody will say, you, can, you will not be able to say, you have made Abraham what? Rich. What is the connection between lifting hands to the Lord and being rich? Why would he say, I have lifted up my hands to the Lord most high? You will not make, you will not say you made Abraham rich. Why? You will not tie anything to me. I am blameless before the throne. I'm perfected by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Now, there is something that the Spirit of God dropped very strongly in my heart about clean hands. How do we get our hands dirty usually? The number one is strife. Anybody, any church, any family, any place you find strife, you can never find blessing there. This is all I say today and go. We are good. Look, the reason for the quarrels, the infighting in our homes and all that is what? 
is to generate strife so that blessing cannot flow. You want to see close heavens on people? Check, there is strife going on. Is either the person is holding someone and quietly hating somebody in their lives, then you will see that issues are coming up. And you know, the interesting thing is this, the devil works in such a way that you cannot relate it. You cannot relate them. I know we are talking about kingdom blessing. By now, you people should have been shouting and jumping, but you are not doing that. Yes, because this is the real deal. But they won't tell you. James chapter 4. Let, let me just, I'm just going to flow as the Spirit of God will lead me now. James chapter 4. Let me show you there. Because we must get this. So that when you see strife, you run. Play the fool. Please, play the fool and do what? And run. James chapter 4 verse 1. <clears throat> Look at it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires and pleasure that war in your members? Many times, this person wants it this way and this person wants it that way. Or this person sees things this way and this person sees things that way. This person perceives this person as this. This person perceives this person as that. At the end of the day, the bottom line of strife is selfishness and self-centeredness. God wants to do a surgical operation in us today so that he can rip those things out and then you see what is going to happen next. Are you getting it? Because when you see someone who is offended at somebody, you will notice that the next thing the person will talk about is me, my, I, me, my, I, what I think, what I believe, what I see, what I said to me. It is going to be all about what? Me. I promise you, you cannot be all about God. And the moment that happens, who becomes the God? You become the God of yourself. And God cannot be a God in your life anymore. That's where strife comes in. Strife is dangerous. Verse 2. Verse 2, sir. It says, you lost and do not have. You murder and convert and cannot obtain. You fight Yet, you do not have. Why? Because you ask. You do not ask. Let's go to verse 3. You do not ask. Sorry, you ask and do not receive. Why? Because you ask and is that you may spend it where? On your pleasure. I grew up in a community. Sometimes, when God does something for someone, you see somebody, they begin to, or maybe they get, they get something, or something happens and, you know, they're able to break through and the other person they are at war with have not broken through, they pick up a song. Eh? And they begin to sing a song to slight somebody else. Without understanding that the Bible says if you laugh at the downfall of someone, the same calamity that came on that one will come on you. God delivered my sister here. The very, it, it just played out like the case of Haman in the scripture. 
The very same people who were going to hang her and kill her at work. The same people, the very rope they, 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 they created, they hung themselves on it. And the most senior official of them was dismissed. And she came and she was screaming, she was dancing. He said, hey, it's good for them. I said, shut up! Rejoice in the Lord that he has given you deliverance, but don't rejoice at the downfall of somebody. Otherwise, the same thing will come back to you. Do you know why? God also created them in his image. Are you getting the point? What made a Moses not go to the promised land? Psalm 103. Just hold that scripture. Don't change it because I'm, I'm going to come there. Psalm 103. Psalm 106. Someone to read verse 30, verse 33. Let's see. What does he say? 106 verse 33. Oh, come on. Are we not fast enough? What does he say? Because they rebelled. Now, when you read my kind of scripture, let's see New King James. Does anybody have a New King James? Please read it, please. What does it say? <laughs> now, when you, what does the scripture say? No, verse 32. Verse 32 then. Of Meribah. That's what I'm looking for. They angered the Lord. They provoked the Lord at the waters of Meribah. What does Meribah mean? Meribah means what? Strife. They call the place the place of strife. Because strife will trigger anger, and anger cannot walk the Spirit of God. Therefore, when Moses was supposed to speak to the rock, he struck the rock twice. And they lost their leader. So we must be careful with this strife thing. Let's see verse 4. What does it say? Let's go to verse 3 again. I want to show you something. It says, you do not, you ask and do not receive because you ask and miss that you may spend it on your what? On your pleasures. Now verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses. Please. He's writing to the church. James was writing to who? Christians. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is a enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend must make a friend of the world makes his enemy himself an enemy of God. Do you know from a scriptural perspective, an adulterer is not or an adulteress is not someone who takes a man to sleep with or a woman to sleep with? No, it's someone who makes himself a friend the world hallelujah we're talking about kingdom what blessing we have to clear these cobwebs and deal with it first there are so many things plugging the way for the blessing to flow One of them is the clean hands. You cannot carry strife in you and prosper. Life will always be bitter. You might camouflage it. Are you getting me? You might sugarcoat life and say it's fine. But I can guarantee you is not. Is not. I 
I know someone who has been so blessed by God. So brilliant. But there is something that kills him. Strife. Strife. We grew up together. He is better graced than I am. But the difference between me and him is that he has allowed his life to be ruled by strife. He fights with everybody and anybody. He can hold grudge for five years. Are you getting what I'm saying? Eh? He has uh, he's not 40 yet. Maybe he's just turned 40. But he has uh, high blood pressure. He has um, I don't, I don't know. All manner. All manner. Let me tell you. If you are someone given to strife. Your body is a home for sickness. Infirmity. Look. I have studied and observed this. Your body is a home for so when the moment you see an opportunity to strive, beg the person say, I am sorry, don't even worry, and walk away. Play the fool and walk away. You save your life. Let me show you that. Genesis, let's turn to Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter chapter Genesis chapter 4, 13. Genesis chapter 13, please. You see, we've not even, I can't finish this. We're still not touching on the portrait. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's see. Um, let's see from verse 1. So that we get the story in context. From verse 1. Then Abraham went up from Egypt. He and his wife and all that he had. And Lot with him. To the south. Abraham was very rich in livestock. In silver and in gold. We're going to come here. Very soon. Okay. But let's clear all cobwebs first. And he went on his journey from the south as far as where? As far as where? Bethel. He's beginning to do what? Go up to where? The house of God. He left Egypt to find the holy place. The heel of the Lord. The heel of the Lord, when we're talking about the heel of the Lord, we're not necessarily talking about one mountain somewhere that we have to go up and go and pray. No, 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 no. There is a dimension in the spirit. There is a position in the spirit that you will know that you're seated far above principalities and powers. But for you to do that, you know that there is a process. You must discover the altar of the Lord. Are you getting it? I will show you the difference because uh, not now. It's too, I, w I wish we can have two hours preaching. Two to three hours. You remember our Bible studies those days before the pandemic came in. We stay two and a half hours. You teach this thing. It enters your spirit. You know it can't come out again. Amen. Now, and he went to 
See, he went on his journey from, from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. All right. To the place of the altar which he had made where? At the first. He showed you that this man was repenting. There was a repentance taking place. He was going back to the, his first, the place where he first loved the Lord, where he first met God. And Abraham called on the name of the Lord, verse 5. The Lord also who went with him did what? Had flock, herds, and tents. So, know who you go with. I've told people, if you walk with me, you'll be blessed. Huh? Young man, are you blessed or not? If you walk with me, there is no doubt about it that you'll be blessed. What gives me that audacity? I found the blessing. Are you getting what I'm saying? And this is where what I'm trying to get everybody to see. You can never be poor another day in your life. That is the purpose of God. That is the purpose of the gospel. That is why Jesus will say, he has anointed me to preach the good news to who? Did you get it? If you catch the real gospel, you can never be poor another day in your life. But you must catch it first. So, are we done? What's happening to it? Praise God. Let's go back to default. Okay, verse... Um, This, yeah, so Lot, Lot, Lot went with, so Lot had f flocks, everything and all that, and on and on and on. Now, the land was not able to support, is it verse, um, verse 6, now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together. For their possessions were so great that could, they could not dwell together. That, that's understandable. But verse 7, look at it. And there was strife. There was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's flock and the herdsmen of Lord's livestock. What's happening here is beginning to bite the hand that fed him. He has arrived. He's now a big boy. You have a car. You have a jeep. I have a jeep. You have a house. I have a house. You have cattle. I have cattle. Uncle, game has changed. Why will he talk to me like that? He thinks it's like those days. <laughs> I laugh. Hallelujah. The Canaanites and the Parasites dwelt in the land. I don't want to get into this one, but I taught you on what the Canaanites and the Parasites meant last year. So please refer to the, um, to the messages. So Abraham said to Lot. What did Abraham, said to Abraham, Abraham said to say to Lot? He says, please let there be no strife between me and him. <laughs> between you and me. Can you see that Lot was beginning to... Eh? <laughs> ah, Lot now has muscle. The young boy that was taken from home the other day is now a big boy. 
He has gained this thing. He has forgotten that once upon a time, he was only a headsman. Once upon a time, this was the man that was giving him pocket money. Once upon a time, this one was the man that put clothes on his back. Once upon a time, this is the man that set him up in his business. Once upon a time, which cattle did he buy in his life? If not for the one that he was given. But look at Abraham. What did Abraham say? Please. I am begging you. Please, I'm kneeling down for you. Huh? When an old man begins to beg a young man, there is an issue. Friends, friends, don't worry about it. Just listen to the word. Okay? Don't get distracted. Amen. Amen. What are we seeing here? <laughs> Abraham, who understood what the blessed means, because he was the one God said to, I will bless you. Blessing, I will do what? Bless you. Please, I beg you. I don't want to lose this thing. You make the choice. If this is where you want, I'll move away for you. If you want to move away, I'll move away. Whatever you want to do, please do. I'm happy. I will, I will oblige. Watch what happens. It says, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my headsman and your headsman, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. If you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes. He's a big boy now. He's well enlightened. He lifted up his eyes and saw the plains of Jordan. Look at how, look at the posh, the posh way he's being presented. He saw, the, he lifted up his eyes and he saw the plains of Jordan. It was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was well watered everywhere like what? The garden of the Lord. It may look like it. If it's not it, it's not it. I remember an advert going up about paracetamol. They said if it's not paracetamol, it cannot be like paracetamol. Is it Panadol or something? Amen. If it's not Panadol, it cannot be like Panadol. If it's not the garden of the Lord, it cannot be like the garden of the Lord. Like the land of Egypt as, like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zoar. Remember, he went to Egypt. He saw the beauty of Egypt. So this guy must have mastered maybe, uh, uh, you know, a lot of um, uh, uh, um, cosmopolitan. He must have in, he had, had some cosmopolitan lifestyle at the time. He's now a big boy. Perhaps he's one, he's one of those guys that are suited up into the office. You know, he's not a CEO of a firm. What do you expect? The Bible says, then Lot chose for himself. 
You can see what strife can do. There's so many testimonies, there's so many stories coming to my mind that I just don't even want to share. Because of what strife does. You see them painful and bitter. And the interesting thing is this. These people under the sway of strife were still not connected that I need to break before God and repent so that he can heal me and let me free so that the blessing of God can flow towards me. Look at what it says. And he chose for himself the plains of the Jordan and Lord journeyed east and they separated from each other. Let's see verse 14. After he has separated, it says, And the Lord said to Abram, After Lot has separated from him, Let's, Let me try and rephrase that. And the Lord said to Abraham, After strife has left, You cannot hear God. If you're a man given to strife. You cannot. I'm sorry to disappoint. And you know the interesting thing. <laughs> one of them one say, one of them one day told me, said, You know what? I was praying this morning, and the Holy Spirit said to me, I said, My man, I said, Who Holy Spirit will come and talk to this hooligan? But you have to respect it because he said the Holy Spirit. But the Spirit will bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You cannot come and tell me, bamboos me, the Holy Spirit. You are just trying to rubber stamp your ways. You are just, you're just a, rebel, a, a rebel. And the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord has separated from him, he says, lift up your eyes. <laughs> they did two things. Can you see that Lot, did, Lot and Abraham did the same thing? But one was ordered by the Lord. The other one is your own concern. Lift up your eyes as far as your eyes can see. Lift up your eyes and look from where you are, not what southward, eastward. Look at the same east that he went. Westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you. It is not I will give to you. I give to you and to your descendants forever. Yes, sir. Did he pay for it? Did he have to get anything for it? Huh? Did God ever say, God says, I will bless you. But can you see that the tangibility of God's blessing is beginning to evolve? As soon as strife left, it opened and blocked that pipe and that flowed in. And God showed up and said, Look around you, I give it to you. You know why? This was chapter what, 13. And in chapter 14, he could say, I have lifted up my hands to the Lord Most High. This is how you have clean hands, sir. We've not even touched pure heart. I can't rush this message. I will not rush it. I can't rush it. Because we all have to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Let's stop all this religion. I'm blessed beyond the cause. I'm this beyond the dirt. Did, did you make critical statements? Uh, but, 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 you, but you have no evil in your heart. You expect God to come through for you. And then you come and say, I pray and pray. I've prayed and prayed. There's nothing. 
Why would there be anything? There is strife in your midst. Kill it. Did anybody get something today? Let me see if there's any other thing I want to add. <laughs> Hallelujah. We must learn not to strive. You know what I sense? Let's just stop it here. And the time is also saying, let's stop it here. Let's rise to our feet. Mm -hmm.